It's the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show on iHeartRadio, your place for fun, informative, weekly car talk. Well, welcome back. Um, we're uh, going to join Mr. Armstrong at the Hot Rod Tour of Texas. I think they're still in New Braunfels. So John, Don is in his... Uh, in his speedo out there, it's Schlitterbahn. <laughs> he just dropped, Uh-oh. and we just dropped him. So there he is. He's back. Well, no, just dropped him. So we'll we'll get we'll get Don back here in a second. Uh, he has joined uh, the Hot Rod Tour of Texas. He drove out there Thursday, Thursday night morning to Victoria. Then they went to Shiner, and then they went to New Braunfels because they did the Shiner Brewery Tour. They did the Shiner Brewery Tour, and then last night they did the American Graffiti at one of the drive-in theaters in New Braunfels, and they bought out the whole drive-in theater. Well, my understanding is there was 300 vehicles for this event, for mm-hmm. the Hot Rod Tour, and then there's two other venues of uh, the drive-in in that park. So there's actually three different screens for three different types of organizations. Oh, but I thought, I thought all three screens were showing American Graffiti. No, they no, they, they only had it for uh, one. One of them? Okay. So Don was sitting alone in his car watching American Graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> is, is he back on yet? No. But he he soon will be I'm working on it. I'm sure he knows the, uh, the the struggles we have with Zoom and Mars. <laughs> Thank you. She whiz. <laughs> um, and where where are they off to next? That I don't know. Yeah, well, he'll tell us. He, yeah, well, when he gets back. Well, I was hoping that he would. Yeah, I just got to get him and back. And then they finish in Fort Worth at a museum in Fort Worth on Sunday. And then from there, they're sent on their way. They're doing the drag strip today, I think. Oh, you're right. They're yeah. doing the drag strip up near Waco somewhere. He showed me his helmet. It's a nice helmet he got. Yeah, very nice. And he's going to run? Yeah, yep. he's going to. Yep. Oh, wow. He's not going to do any hard launches, which makes sense. You know, that you don't want to be doing any 5,000 5, yeah. 5, RPM launches in a 2001 Corvette. Um, things but, tend to break. But it, Well, you know, th- things can break when you're beating on a car. It doesn't matter if it's brand new or if it's 20 two years old and three dollars a mile from there to here is you know outrageous. yeah haggerty will tow it but they might not tow it for free that far yeah. exactly but there's supposed to be a pretty big crowd of people and if you follow hot rod tour of texas on their facebook page there have been a number of dropouts already really yeah i think one guy dropped out because he dropped a rod out of the bottom oh. <laughs> out of the bottom of his engine Ba-dum-bum. that's the real so, dropout that's the real dropout and then uh, you know when you have that kind of collection of, there's a pretty decent collection of what I'll call rat rods that are there. Um, you know, those custom built oddities, for lack of a better phrase, and that's not disparaging mm-hmm. rat rods. Um, but, you know, sometimes they aren't really designed to go Unique. 500, 800 miles right. on a trip. They're kind of more short run. And I'm stuff. sure there's people joining them as the route goes through as yeah, well. Yeah, each, each city will get more people and some people will drop out because some people aren't going to go uh friday to sunday they might just go friday friday and saturday and right. drop out and then people pick up saturday and sunday and he'll tell us all that when we get him back on but he talked i talked to him yesterday and he said that some of these towns the 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 town folks came out and lined the streets to watch an actual car show yeah in the like middle a big of the day parade. yeah big parade and, and then he also said that uh, in some of these towns the police came out and gave them priority movement through the town right. where, you know, they had kind of shut the cross traffic off. And waved off them through the, the red lanes, lights and right? things, yep. Which, uh, which makes sense because when you're moving, let's say, you know, they say 300 cars. Let's say there's only 200 cars. You're moving 200 cars through a town. Uh, I've done that on some cruises. Well, you were on yeah, one of them. Absolutely. And it, it probably wasn't yeah. even 50 cars yeah. on it. When you get stopped going through that town, you can kind of get some separation and, and – and this, you know, the line gets long. It'll be, you know, next year it'll be bigger and better. But there are towns in Texas that folks don't even know about that they're going through. That little, little tiny, like we said, one traffic light towns that are just gorgeous, gorgeous little hometown, like Mayberry RFD or something. You know, those type of facility or those type of towns going through Texas. You can smell Aunt B making, <laughs> making, making cake, cookies, making cookies <laughs> as you drive through town. And uh, the mothball cookie, a, a long you line and, of the Dairy and, Queen. Yeah, yeah. And if you're exactly. speeding going through town, Barney's going to pull you over, <laughs> and you're going to spend the night with Otis. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't be that'd be fun. <laughs> spend the night with Otis. <laughs> well, you notice how happy everybody is in Mayberry RFD. You it's know why? Because they're not married, except Otis. Otis, the town drunk, the is the only one that's married. <laughs> 
True. And maybe now you know why he's the town drunk. <laughs> there you go. So, no Don yet? No, uh, I sent him the link to call in if he was having audio pro- I mean, video problems. Where is he? They, New Braunfels. Uh, I don't think they've left. Well, no, they probably they were just leaving. now leaving. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and what happened to me yesterday talking to him was, because um, I had called him as they were starting to leave Shiner at like 1 o'clock, and I think everybody's on their phone calling home to say, hey, we're leaving And there's one Shiner. tower. Yeah, and there's one tower. So I think the tower just gets yeah. over. With all the empty beer on. cans around it. <laughs> <laughs> or it's built out of empty beer cans. Well, some yeah. of those little towns are going to have, you know, more sparse RF out there. Oh, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. And, uh, you know, they are taking basically the two lanes going back through everything. They're not mm-hmm. getting out on the highway. They're out, out in the toolies. So oh, you're definitely going to lose it. More Especially if there's some hills problems. and so forth. Yeah, valleys. Hills yeah. and valleys. And uh, Hot Rod Tour te- Texas, this is the inaugural run of the Hot Rod Tour of Texas. Uh, and I'm assuming that Bobby Sparkman and crew will do this again next year because they've had such a good turnout for this year. And, uh, you know, can they move it around different parts of Texas? Oh, absolutely they can. You know, because they're really not going through hill country, you know, so it's not like it's Fredericksburg and going through right. some of the, the, the twisty roads there. Or for me, because uh, I've done a lot of them, you know, the twisty roads uh, out in East Texas. Oh, so, yeah. You know, that's, going, that's all forestry and all yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. A lot of fun, a lot of fun drives out there, but you're long ways between gas stations. And, and I think they'll places. probably start in Victoria because uh, don't that's they live down at. there? That's yeah. They, they, so yeah. how many years they've been doing it? This, this is the first, first year. Oh, first year. First year. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and kind of. Go ahead. No, I was going to say what great success they're having. Yeah. It, it's kind of a play on the Hot Rod Power Tour, mm-hmm. but it's better because it's all Texas. <laughs> Um, well, where else can you drive 12, 12 hours except still for like in Philadelphia, or Pennsylvania, and yeah, still be in the well, same state. Well, you could state. be ca- caught in traffic in Houston for 12 hours. Well, that's could, true. Yeah. So drive. That's across is, town. Yeah. And Don would be flying <laughs> overhead. Yeah. But, you can uh, wave at him. Don is doing uh, sh- uh, short video vignettes. I like that. I New vignette. Well, I, I like had to that. look that word Fancy, up. Huh? Now I need. Um, <laughs> on <laughs> our Facebook page. Yeah, go off for two, some snails two, later. Two, three. Yeah. Two escargo, <laughs> two three minute long videos of uh, where he is and what's going on and how the tour is progressing. So I know he did uh, Thursday, did three of them, three of them yesterday, yep. and I'm sure he'll do some uh, today as the internet allows. But you know, like David said, he's a bit out in the boonies, and maybe the internet might not allow as much. But you Plus would think he's New Braun driving. Was, I mean, if he's on the, you know, once he start. And his position starts moving. Now he's got to drive. He's got a manual gearbox. He's got a six feet over there. He's got to deal with. So the video may be shaky if he's got it. In the, yeah, in the shift rolling, you know, going from one to <laughs> two, talking, or talking on the phone, three to four, <laughs> trying to hide from the cops as you're on the phone, and and Don's the traffic guy, right? Yep. Yeah, we're we're flying over another <laughs> distracted driver here, <laughs> going yeah. the wrong way. Right. I guess we should have gave him one of those windshield mounts so he could put his. Camera phone up well, there on that. Well, he he had one yesterday, and he was on the move, and uh, and it was facing him. And then there was a point where he pointed it forward, where you could see. I, I, I was going to give him bust his chops about it, but he, I left him alone. He has control. He's he's a professional. <laughs> That's what he keeps telling us. <laughs> David just <laughs> looked at me. It's not nice to lie. Eyebrows raised. <laughs> we we, oh, no. we now have a ministry of truth, so yes. be careful. That oh, that's right. They're going to be coming after <laughs> oh, you for disinformation. Dog. I'm telling you. You can put that on Twitter, but you can't tell the government. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. uh, again, like we, we mentioned in the open, um, uh, Gulf Coast Auto Shield and John Gray prepped Don's car for the power tour or for the hot rod tour of Texas. And uh, Don says he's had a lot of comments about how good his car looks and asking him whether or not it had recently been repainted. And it hasn't. It's still the original paint on that 2001 uh, Corvette. Just it's been uh, uh, well ceramic coated and retreated a couple of times. So it looks And he keeps it under cover. Oh, absolutely. He came over yesterday or Thursday uh, to drop off Suze because she's not here today. She's at, at my house she's vacationing he's vacationing well. and uh he said you got to take a look at this i want to it was just gorgeous in the driveway and then he, of course he's got everything in its place in the in the, the trunk area mr anal retentive you know his little cooler his chairs his helmet, everything was like had a, had a purpose at a place it was a, it's a good looking and plus he's got the new headlights 
and all that LED stuff. Oh, I forgot oh, about yeah. that. So yeah, it is. It's really really nice. Yeah. Yep. So that was. And and Don again drives a 2001 uh, black Corvette, gray leather interior in it, and uh, he's got a. Um, Six speed on the LS1. He's done a couple of minor mods, nothing, nothing major. I keep telling him to put a, a supercharger or something on it. He's unwilling to do that. But he did a, uh, uh, did a shifter, short throw shifter. Did the LED headlights? Yeah, we did the Hurst. Yeah, and uh, he said the LED headlights made a huge difference oh, yeah. in the nighttime driving because the LEDs give you a white light versus the, the blue uh, tint. incandescence. That give you a yellow light, or the halogens that you, give you the blue, the the blue, yeah, yeah, that, and that is a big difference. But you know, the the car was nice when he got to it to start with, and right. he has just not only improved on it but maintained that that the virtue of the car, C five. So, yeah, well, and stuff. it's got a newer set of wheels on it. He just recently New put tires, tires on, on it, it. and uh, he, he had all the fluids, the trans, and all right. that serviced over at uh, uh, Superior. Yep, uh, with uh, Carolina, Carolina's, yep. and he bought the car from Greg Enders, mm -hmm. Erica Enders' dad, and we do want to give a huge shout out yes. to Erica and her team there at Elite for the uh, uh, the victory last weekend at, at Baytown, the final NHRA event at Baytown, and uh, Erica uh, won the gold there. And she's um, in a points lead now, isn't she? Yeah, should be. she's in so a points lead. Four time could be, you know, don't want to jinx it, but you know, it's looking good. On her way to looking the fifth. Good. And then um, uh, we really enjoyed last weekend out at Baytown. It, it was, was a blast. It was a fun, fun. It's always a fun event to go to, and we were treated like uh, kings. Seth uh, Angel and his crew out there, and Juanita, who's the catering manager. Out there at the top Eliminator Club, did a real nice job yeah. of making sure we were. And well the place for. was packed. It was it people was everywhere, wall wall everywhere. Wall. But it was controlled. No one was out of hand. Everybody was friendly. Uh, you know, traffic the, was a little tough getting in and yeah. out. Yeah, well, getting and out wasn't bad. Getting in was, was getting little, in was a little, little bit, a little tough. And I think that was just the jam up that was happening at the gate. Uh, I believe it was the first time they had charged to park out there. Yeah. And the charge to park was purely credit card. They didn't take any cash. Really? So if you didn't have a credit card with you, you had to do something else. Go about park somewhere there. else, not on property. And turn around and leave. No, I well, think no. I think some people actually went out and bought a like a Visa gift card so they can come back in and park. And you kind of understand why they don't want to handle that much cash in today's well, sure. environment. You know, you don't want some guy out there collecting. You know, he's got four thousand dollars worth of cash on him, and somebody comes up and collects back right uh, all at once. Um, so running it on credit cards made good sense, but they were there wasn't an empty seat in the house. Yeah, it was it great. Was, it was, it was cool. great. the it camping was, area. I mean, but it, to that point too, when you when you're going through all the vendor stands and, and the merch areas, it was all controlled. You know, you could stand in line for two or three people, and you, you buy your whatever, and you move on. Mm -hmm. uh, even the the concessions were, were there were lines yes granted but they weren't that long I mean it went really quick so yeah and then I went down to uh, the campgrounds um, a friend of mine who is uh, uh, probably the, one of the top techs in the city Jason Traggart he works down at uh, Beck and Maston South I've known Jason probably coming on twenty five years now hmm. uh, he had a, he had a camper uh, on the almost almost to the finish line. Uh, right there, um, where when, whose who's, uh, car, the funny car blew up. That was up. Ashley, wasn't it? Yeah. Justin Ashley? No, he was top fuel. But so, so, somebody's funny car kind of blew up right in front of him, and the, the body was on Saturday at, at yeah, yeah. qualifying, and the body kind of split in half and stuff was raining down. I actually have the race on tape. That happened right in front of his, his uh, area, and he says you could feel the boom. The concussion? The, wow. The concussion when the engine blew up. Wow. But a big shout out to uh, NHRA, to Toyota, and uh, Toyota Gazoo Racing. Uh, we really want to thank them for sponsoring us coming out there, uh, and it was uh, great to be. And Jeff's man, got Jeff's got the T-shirt. Either that or he's t-shirt. trying to show us his nipple rings. <laughs> I haven't figured out. Yeah, which well, <laughs> I didn't wear them today. And then uh, uh, this weekend, NHRA is at the Four Wide in Charlotte, and uh, that's. Four wide's always an interesting race because four cars race 
and two advance until they get to the finals, and then four cars race, and they finish. I'm not a big fan of that. In fact, I think the consensus of most of the drivers, they're not big fans either. They'll talk to you in private about it, but, you know, publicly they'll say, oh, yeah, four wide, great, yeah. But yeah. Well, I think, it's a, I think it's a bit of a mind meld trying to figure out now I have four staging lights to pay attention to, and which lane am I in, and which light am I? So I think early on it was a bigger issue. I think they've kind of figured it out now. Fine-tuned it. But it's, well, they haven't really changed the way the four-wide runs, but I think the drivers have kind of figured out the lighting and the staging of it. But I still think there's some confusion goes on if you're not used to it, and all of a sudden you roll up and there's four staging lights, and you're like, well, am I one, two, three, or four? And did I just roll in? Did I just deep stage? I'll force deep staged again. And you're thinking about that and the light goes green and you're still sitting there while John deep staged you. Okay. Which is why he does that is to <laughs> distract you. And he openly admits that. Have you ever been deep staged? No comment. Okay. Do we have Don? Did we get Don back? He's doing 70 miles an hour down the road, trying to keep up. Oh, okay. So he won't be back on then at that, with that. It, I, it's I a little challenge to hold the phone, down. maybe downshift, upshift. Put something. your beer down, grab the phone. No, he's not. Yeah. Beer was yesterday at Shiner. I, I always laugh at him when uh, Sparkman said their first stop was going to be the Shiner beer place. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great thing for a cruise of cars. <laughs> performance cars to stop at the beer place well, it was after breakfast first <laughs> <laughs> it was after breakfast i think don's tour was at 11 o'clock yesterday yeah. in well that's great good stuff and then um while we talked a little bit about uh racing like i said nhra this weekend is four wide at charlotte nascar is at dover uh, next weekend, nascar will be at darlington and the weekend following that is nascar will be at kansas I've been to the Kansas track. I've been there many times. And uh, pretty pretty common mile-and-a-half track. Mm -hmm. Cookie cutter. Uh, yeah, very, very cookie cutter. Um, doesn't have the amount of banking they do at Texas, so it's not quite as fast. I think Texas is, is pretty high banked. For My them. understanding is Texas is a scary track. With the banking and the speeds they can you know, top out at even further is that it's uh, – Texas is a fast mile yeah, and a half. Yeah, a fast mile and a half. And they, they say, depending on what you're running, like the NASCAR or maybe the, the open Indy wheel, cars, Indy yeah. cars, well, they, it's scary mm -hmm. stuff, they yeah, say. Yeah, the open wheels, they say yeah. they're they're pushing close to 200 yeah. on that. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And that, that would be quite scary. Yep. And then uh, also uh, next weekend is the inaugural Formula One in Miami. Now, I still haven't figured out how they're going to do that because that kind of came on the on the schedule, I think, late. But I guess Miami's all excited for it. Now, Talk to the hand. And now kind of the conversation is that they need to do three events in the United States with COTA, Circuit of the Americas, out in Austin, with Miami, and now bring Formula One back to uh, Indianapolis, which would make sense. They need to run it through the streets of New York. Well, they do the Formula E through the streets right. of New York, uh, but uh, I won't go there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, also this weekend at Laguna Seca is uh, IMSA is going to be at Laguna Seca, and then on May fifteenth IMSA is going to be at Mid Ohio. IndyCar is at Birmingham this weekend, ne and on the fourteenth IndyCar is at the Grand Prix of Indianapolis, where they'll run the road course in reverse at uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and then the big the big daddy is the Indy five hundred is uh, May twenty ninth. Yep. Absolutely. And then our friend uh, Gina Child Knowles, she will have her Gulf Coast Racing Series here in Houston out at uh, Houston Motorsports Park, and that is uh, off of Beltway 8. And uh, Their season opener is July 2nd. Their season opener is July 2nd, and then they'll also have another race on August 6th and uh, September 10th. And it looks like we have... Don might be back with us. Let's see. Hi, Don. Can you hear How us? How you doing? Can you hear us? We can't hear you. Hi, Don. He can't hear us. Well, turn your turn your volume up. Is he unmuted? Turn off your radio. Uh, well, we heard it earlier. We did a nice test and everything works. O-N-O-F-F. -F 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 You're muted. So what did you say? 
I was wondering if we had him over there. He does something over there. He does something. He's he has un- turned the sound un- on to Zoom. Okay. Turn to Zoom. Oh, anyhow. There's Don. We can see him. He's, <laughs> we, he's we talking to us. He is cussing a storm up. Look yeah, at that. In the- <laughs> <laughs> And we can't hear we him. Can't Do you hear. see audio over there on Can the screen? He... Uh, yeah, it says he's got. Is he unmuted? <laughs> All right. Well, here's Mike. Be unmuted. Blink twice if you can hear us. Uh oh. Mike we'll and his of that. never just, ending audio he issues. He just shifted gears. Yeah. He just went off the bridge. Um, so. So, again, Gina Child Knowles uh, is uh, bringing uh, asphalt racing back to Houston. And uh, we are – where are you at? What are you, what are you giving me? I was telling you, uh, we got features and headlines coming up. Yep. So uh, we will uh, get on to Moving doing, on. doing a little bit of our, our headline stories that are out there. You want to do automotive news? Uh, yeah, I think you have some recalls okay, to I'll, talk about. All right, let's do recalls. I've got that. Got it right here. Give you a break on that. So the most current recalls, this is by the NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. They're telling us today that uh, the aerial device pivot points improperly lubricated, and that is on, uh, what is that? Mercedes. Yeah, Mercedes. And then we've got uh, unsecured ground connection bolt, Mercedes from 2021 to 2022. Uh, the next one would be a Mercedes and in, inoperable rear view camera display, but that's ongoing. We've talked about yeah, that before. Yeah, and, and they can't get the parts because right. they can't get Mars his parts. Well, they're either, trying to so. get Mike's his first, and then they're going to do the Mercedes yeah, next. Yeah, right. <laughs> the United States saw a record number of automotive recalls in 2021 uh, as far as the total number of recalls, but it was on fewer vehicles. So that's an indication that many vehicles had multiple recalls on them. The U.S. Uh, uh, individual recall campaigns reached a record high of 406 recalls in 2021 compared with 317 in 2020, while the total number of vehicles dropped from 21.6 million from 28.9 million. Wow. And that doesn't count the Takata airbag and the GM ignition switch recalls. Yep. And then uh, they've got wiring uh, under seat not secured properly. Uh, frayed passenger seat belt buckle wires. We've talked about that before that's still ongoing for the 2018 to current uh actually 2018 and then missing welds may cause shock absorbers to separate that sounds like a loss of control 2022 models uh we're talking uh well that was lexus i'm sorry and then we got more lexus coming up with stability control deactivated on startup those are 21 and 22 models as well and then ferrari is going to recall uh vehicles globally the 548 and the 588 for issues with the brakes, they forgot to put a vent in the master cylinder. So now as your brake fluid goes down, because as your brakes wear, the fluid replaces the pad wear. So the brake fluid normally goes down in your master cylinder. Well, it'll go down to a point and then it kind of stops going down because it builds a vacuum inside the master cylinder. So is that con- confirm a hard pedal? Is it a hard yeah, pedal? no, it'll be a very hard pedal and a very sudden stop oh. when you tag into something. I got you. Um, because the brakes just aren't going to apply the way they want. So Ferrari's repair for that is to put a vented cap on. And we got one for Nissan, the Sentra. Uh, headlight aim may be misaligned. So that's for the 2020 model. Volkswagen Atlas, missing fuel injector filler may cause fuel leak. And what happens? A thermal event. event. There you go. That's on the 2021 models. There are a bunch more. Uh, you got Buick, Lincoln. Jeep, uh, the Buicks involved, driver's airbag inflator may explode. Well, that's... Only once. Yeah, exactly. Uh, head restraint cushion may detach on a Lincoln Aviator. Oh, boy. Uh, that's a neck injury there. Head restraints may not... Or head restraints not welded properly on the Jeep Compass. That's... Uh, yeah, things that aren't welded model. properly are or not a good thing. going to blow up on you. And there's several others. you got Ford, Ford, and, and some other things going on. But we've talked about these in the past as well, and they're still ongoing. And then there's always some, some news out there about what's going on in the industry. Um, one of the pieces I took was uh, the pay increase from uh, 2020 to oh, 20. Oh, this is a good one. 
to 2021 for uh, Mary Barra, she went from 23.7 million a year to 29 million a year. She maintained her position as the highest paid CEO of the big three um, automakers in 2021. Ford, well deserved. Ford Jim Farley made a Farley made a 22.8 million, and then um, uh, Carlos Carlos Traveras made 21.5 million, and she made a 29. What do you million. What do you have to do to make get a, a million, several million dollar raise in a year? What What do you got to do? I have absolutely no idea because I'm still trying to figure out what. Was GM successful at for 2021? Well, you more just, so than they were in. 2020. You just said they had the number one paid CEO, so that was that's, successful that's for her. Success, yeah. right? You got to be number one at something. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's kind of confusing. In what introducing more EVs and, and toting well, the line you know, of the government their, or what? Their their focus is going to be EVs. Uh, General Motors announced a. a Hybrid electric Corvette next I year. I saw that. It's in the and news. And then a full electric Corvette Got it. shortly thereafter, yeah. which, you know, I'm cool with the hybrid electric because the hybrid electric is something that they're doing in Formula One. Proven They've been technology. doing for a yeah. number of years, and that is to give you a horsepower kick or a boost at certain drive car- drive moments to make the car more powerful. Mm-hmm. And that's that's great, but it still has an internal combustion engine. The full EV Corvette um, uh, is going to be a beast. It's going to be fast and furious, but it's still, are they going to call it a Corvette or are they going to call it something else? Well, um, my question for that is, if since it's a Corvette, there's not much room in it, where are you going to put all the extension cords? Oh, well, I think there's going to be plenty of room for the battery because when you take out the, the engine out of the rear of it, uh, and uh, the drivetrain switches around and be probably very easy to put a all-wheel drive system on it uh, as the new electric Corvette. Uh, It'll be on a spool. You just pull it out. Yeah. Or if they're going to go all electric on the Corvette, why don't they make the body style like a 60 or a 59 and then make that the electric? I think a 62. 62. 62 yeah. would be the one I would go after. And then you make that the new 2024 or 3 or 5 whatever Corvette. That would be cool. Instead of all this fancy, the, the, the retro look. Yeah, exactly. Uh, We're probably, all retro here. Probably, probably not gonna. Yeah, yeah. That's just a thought. That's well, that's why I get paid twenty nine million dollars a year. The only one who isn't gray <laughs> is David. And I think that's just because he uses Grecian Formula yeah. sixteen. I that's correct. <laughs> Some kind of sheen. <laughs> um, uh, funny car uh, champion Ron Caps uh, announced uh, this week that he is switching from a Mopar product to a Toyota Supra, GR Supra. Uh, and he is going to be racing the GR Supra this weekend at the Four Wide Nationals. He had been in a Mopar product for quite some time. Okay. And with that, we're going to uh, take a break. Take a break. Here we go. Father's Day weekend, Saturday, June 18th, 2022. It's the next Tailpipes and Tacos cruise in, and you're invited. Tailpipes and Tacos Father's Day edition will be at the same Loopy Tortilla in Katy, 8 to 11 a.m. on Saturday, June 18th. It's the only place cruisers compete for trophies and other prizes. Enter your vehicle for best hot rod, best classic, and best modern classic. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's coolest cruise in and is your opportunity to see the best hot rods, show cars, classics, and resto mods, and get Loopy Tortilla breakfast tacos and adult beverages. There's no entry fee and cars will automatically compete for custom Loopy trophies and other prizes. It all happens at the Lippy Tortilla Tex Max in Katy on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I 10. Kick off summer with Tailpipes and Tacos Father's Day Edition, Saturday, June 18th. The in real time car talk show will be there too. Celebrate Father's Day, the start of summer, and the return of Tailpipes and Tacos. Saturday morning, June 18th, 8 to 11. We'll see you then, weather permitting. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is now part of the iHeart family. Now you'll have access to 24-7 car talk anytime you need a fix. Just download the iHeart Radio app and ask for In Wheel Time Car Talk, and there we are. Be sure to save us in your iHeart library for instant access. No matter where you are, you have the best car talk show right on your PC, laptop, or mobile device and never have to worry about finding us again. Of course, you can always get access to our video and audio streams via InWheelTime.com and your favorite podcast channel, and all of this is free to you. From the iHeartRadio app, you'll not only hear our Saturday morning live show, but the best shows of the past, updated weekly. Never miss a minute of up-to-date new car reviews, pre-owned reviews, Conrad's Car Clinic, informative interviews, automotive news, and the most fun car talk show on the planet. 
Just download the iHeartRadio app, search for In Real Time Car Talk, save it to your library, and with a tap of the icon, you'll be in touch with your favorite Car Talk team. In Real Time Car Talk, streaming now on iHeart.com slash In Real Time Car Talk.